Welcome to the High Voltage Light Electric Vehicle channel. This video is about some new motors from a Chinese company called T7 or T07. They're probably not very well known at all in Europe or North America. Um, they do have a huge range of hub motors though, and these two here are their first two mid drives. They've been sent over to me in kind of a kit form as you would expect you would get when you ordered one to, to put on your bike. I have been sent these motors. Um, I didn't pay for them myself, but I'm also not under any obligations to anyone here. I'm free to give my opinion. And I don't think I'd be really helping T07 or anyone else that follows the channel here by a favor by not being honest with, with what I think. I would like to see these motors do well, I've had the pleasure of chatting to Alex, the company's representative in the West for, for quite a while. They do seem as a company to be really open to suggestions. There's definitely been a number of changes I've seen made um, to the original designs of these. And there are already quite a few things that I've noticed that I'd like to see maybe changed still. Um, right now, this is one of a first batch of units that are being sent out to potential dealers in North America and Europe. And they are trying to get away from, I know, the, the basically sell it as cheaply as possible on AliExpress method to have relationships with dealers and customers. And I'm particularly pleased to see them um, use the UART communication protocol for the controller because it just makes it so much easier for everybody involved with these. Um, you can use whatever battery you want with these motors. Um, so we're going to look at the smaller, what they're calling the DM02 motor first. I think it's going to get a proper name, like DM01, DM02 are not exactly awe-inspiring. I think the stumbling block, I think, is less the desire to give it a name and more picking something that everyone likes and can agree on. So actually serious suggestions are accepted in the comments and who knows, like maybe it'll get used. So this motor weighs 3.7 kilograms. It was designed by the same guy that was responsible for what's known as the Tong Shen. Um, it has a rated power of 500 watts, 900 watts peak, and it has a torque sensor based pedal assist system. It also has throttle base control as well. I do have quite a bit of technical information on the various designs, but not probably for this video. And I think maybe a Q and A is a better way of disseminating that information. Um, as far as the motor goes though, it feels very solid. All of the surfaces feel smooth and free of blemishes. It's not particularly flashy, like say the CYC Photon, um, but it, it feels durable and solid. It's a bit heavier than the Photon, and it's not rated quite as high in terms of power output at like 500 watts versus 750 watts. But really, I'm not gonna know what all of this really actually means in the real world until I get to ride it. Um, but it sounds like it's not quite as powerful as the Photon, but it's also going to retail like probably significantly less than the Photon as well. So the motor consists basically, it's, a, it's an in-runner motor and it's driving um, a helical gearbox. Um, in between here and taking it up to the main gear here. Um, the wiring seems to be of good quality. It's pretty standard stuff with, you know, battery and uh, high goes and things like that. Um, the cables here for the battery are 16 gauge. I would prefer to see something um, a little bit bigger used. Um, they did send some wrap here um, for putting around things like the battery cables, which will do something, but I'd, I'd rather see see a thicker wire. Um, this plate thing here I found um, kind of interesting. I'm just gonna pop that off. I was kind of worried when I first looked at it that there seemed to be like a gap that like moisture or something could uh, could get through on that side. Um, but it turns out it's been, it's been properly silicone all in here. I'm a little bit curious about what the purpose of this sort of hollow is. Um, you can't really pass any wiring out through the bottom here. Um, I don't really see what it was created for um, or why. Uh, the cover here is plastic, um, the same as the cover for the big gear here, which is which is also plastic. And the larger DM01 also has this part made with plastic. 
Um, maybe it's to save weight or cost or both. Um, as an area though, it's always going to be behind the behind the chain ring. So it's not really going to be getting any impact. So I, I don't see it being plastic is really going to make much of a difference. The chain ring is a three piece design and like the one for the CYC Photon, it locks into position uh, using the splines. There's then a lock ring here, which tightens anti-clockwise to hold the chain ring in place. I'm not completely sold on the method. Um, I kind of like bolts, but my CYC one has not come loose. So hopefully there won't be an issue with this one either. Uh, what I do like about this chain ring though, is that although this center part with the splines is proprietary, the rest of it I don't think is. So that would let you use an aftermarket chain ring or a chain guard. Um, the one here, it's not um, it's not narrow wide. It's steel. It doesn't look or feel like hideous or anything, but it's definitely not as nice as one, say, from Lecky. So I'll see how it goes. And uh, it does look like you get a decent amount of offset with it. So hopefully it's gonna be easy to get, get a nice chain line with this. So if we spin this around, you can see there's um, there's a sizable amount of space here uh, to fit different frames, and I'm told this is one of the things that was that was improved with this design, so it could fit fit more bikes more easily. Um, there is strangely though this little lump in the middle of it, um, which reduces the gap size. Um, I don't, I can't see a reason for that to be there so maybe they could remove that as part of it uh, if possible and then you'd have even more space to fit around the the bottom bracket of a of a bike frame it's held on with this plate and it's a very familiar technique you just have two m6 bolts here and you have another large lock ring here and that puts it all in place so it just goes on there and then the lock ring on and lots of mid drives have used this this technique i noticed there are no teeth on the lock ring like this one is one from bafang and it has these teeth that on my on my fat bike bit into the aluminum frame um, this doesn't have them um, neither does my cyc photon uh, or the new bbs hd um, neither does the larger DMO one. This has that has exactly the same lock ring as, as, as or locking plate as this one. So how needed are the teeth? Um, I guess we'll see. The pattern for both of these uh, lock rings is proprietary. Um, they do send this tool with the kits for installation. Um, I'm not a big fan of these. You need um, around 90 foot pounds to put one of these on and make sure it doesn't move. They're just uncomfortable to use and you have no guarantee of how tight you've put it on. And I don't have a socket um, that would let me use a torque wrench. So I'm just gonna have to use this um, for these and give it my best guess. Uh, I really like to see a socket made, even if it's something that costs a little bit more. The larger DM01 motor is rated at 1000 watts, 48 volts, 30 amps. And what's interesting though is that I've actually been told that the, the top voltage for the controller on this is 70 volts, which would technically allow the use of a 16S or a 60 volt battery with this. Um, it also has a torque sensor. It's quite a bit heavier than the first motor at 6.3 kilograms, which includes um, the chain ring as well. It's an in-runner with an IPM rotor and a helical gearbox and it's a very familiar design that's very much tried and tested. It doesn't have uh, cooling fins on this one to aid with any kind of heat exchange so it's basically relying on mass and just the flat surface for heat transfer. So it's going to be interesting to see how hot it can be got and if it restricts power when it's pushed effectively. Um, I'm a little bit concerned about the wiring on this. Um, it is a thicker gauge wire than with the, the first motor, the, the, the DM02. Uh, the issue is that where they're exiting 
is uh, is underneath. And I'm pretty sure that when this goes on a bike and gets rotated in position, it's going to leave these like a little bit exposed to debris, branches, chunks of rock. Like if it's being ridden off road, like on road, probably be all right. But it, it's still not, it's still not ideal. Um, I think I'm going to make something using these two bolting points here to basically run along here and shield shield these. Like ultimately for like future revisions of the motor, it would be easy to change the shape of the controller and have them exit in a way that both shields the wires and avoids um, exposure to anything uh, underneath the bike when it's being being ridden. I mean, overall, like both both of these motors um, feel well built. Um, we can have a quick look at the the rest of the bits now. Both of these motors, the, the 01 and the 02, came with the same set of accessories and they're both definitely using the, the same display. Um, it's, I think it's a pretty nice size. It's kind of between the Egg Rider and the larger ones like the 750C. It looks to be very well sealed, um, but no obvious way to get it apart either. Uh, they send it with this to attach it onto your bike. Um, it looks like you can put it in both orientations um, there are bolt points on the back so you could make something else if you wanted to put it on in a different way um, the buttons feel nice and solid clicks to operate um, it looks like a pretty good uh, general display there uh, the crank arms similarly they don't look to be anything particularly special but they're nothing particularly hideous either I was also sent um, some gear cutoffs here um, for with the mechanical style brake so no good if you're using hydraulics but um, it's kind of nice I don't know if I'll be using the cutoffs they also sent um, a gear sensor cutoff with it as well but it's both of these are torque sensing and from what I've seen with the photon you don't really need those to operate it smoothly um, and I'm kind of thinking that the same's going to be the case with these i mean i can try this stuff if people want um just for an experiment but i think i'm probably not gonna not gonna need those the important thing to note with any of the accessories um, like the display like the crank arms is because they're choosing to do things like have uart with the motors we're not tied to these accessories so we're not tied to having to use these crank arms we don't have to use this chain ring um, we probably not even have to use this display you're definitely not forced to use a specific battery or anything like that so there should be as these become more established lots of different options uh, for people to pair different displays and do different things with these motors because as a company they're not actively restricting people from doing that kind of thing i need to um dig out a soldering iron now and I need to get some uh, XT90s put in these so I can do a bench test because this doesn't have any kind of plug at all and this one has the the Anderson one which is not the greatest and then there's a couple of options for what to do from there um, I have lots of options now for bike frames to put these on because uh, I met a really great guy and he has loads of bikes and we're interested in having some fun trying on different things the quickest route to seeing these in action though would be to try them on the bike that the Photon is on right now. And if I did that, it would actually be possible to directly compare the performance of these two torque sensing motors to the Photon because it's the same bike and the same rider and it would just literally be the different motor. So let me know what you think about that in the comments. Um, if I want to go with a different donor bike, it might take a bit longer to get these these up and running. Um, there's no reason why I can't do both of those things down the road, though. I'm not right now going to be ripping these apart just yet. Um, part of the reason for being sent the motors was to get them on bikes and see how easy the install process is, as well as how they ride and provide some feedback. I have linked, however, to a couple of excellent videos in the description. So you can give that channel um, a look out and watch that for some more kind of like inside. That's on this motor, not on this motor, though. 
If you have any questions on any of these, you want me to look at something in particular, um, post them in the, the comments. I'd love to hear from you. You're also very welcome to join our Discord channel. And Alex, their Western representative, is quite often in the chat rooms there. So he can help to answer some of your questions as well. And we're likely going to be putting together a Q&A for all these questions um, because I think some of, them, some of them are probably going to get, get asked quite a lot. So that's it for this video. Uh, thanks for watching and a huge thanks to the channel members. Your support is greatly appreciated. I'm going to get these set up with proper connectors and we'll put them on the bench and we can have a play about with the display and basically make sure everything works um, before we get them on fitted on some bikes. So see you in the next video. Cheers.